Now we're on page 102, and this is exercise 35. And um, in fairness, this is a rhythm we haven't really talked about. This is a pacer uh, rhythm, a pacemaker rhythm, and this is, uh, in fact, a dual chamber pacemaker. But let's start out with the basics, let's start with the heart rate. Now we have a YQRS rhythm, and if we look at the distance between QRS complexes, we get a heart rate of about 75. There are P waves present, but they're preceded by pacer spikes, and this is what the pacer spikes look like. They're, now, these ones, this particular rhythm came from a rhythm uh, simulator, so uh, pacer spikes usually typically look more like just a straight line, and then a, a P wave, and then another straight line, followed by a YQRS complex. So because this is a dual chamber pacemaker, we have a pacer spike followed by a P wave, a pacer spike followed by a YQRS. And the QRS will always be wide because the uh, impulse generator um, has a wire that goes into the right ventricle and it paces the ventricles from that right ventricle. So we see the right ventricle depolarizing first, then the left ventricle depolarizing. So we always get a YQRS complex with a, um, a pacer rhythm. So the PR interval in this particular case is... Um, let me see if I can get this working again here. Uh, 0.16 second. The QRS is wide and um, preceded by a pacer spike. The ratio in this case is 1 to 1. The rhythm is regular. And the interpretation here is a paced rhythm with a heart rate of 75. And this is a dual chamber pacemaker. And the patients usually know something about their, their pacer, uh, their pacemaker, and um, they should have some information in their wallet about the type of pacemaker they have, whether it's a single chamber or dual chamber, and how it fun functions. So it's important to ask the patient for that information. What we also often see with uh, paced rhythms is some uh, intrinsic beats as well. So don't be surprised if you see some um, QRSs that came from the patient's heart uh, and then some pace beats and a mix of intrinsic beats and pace beats. That's quite common. And what we're trying to determine with uh, a patient in a pace rhythm is whether the pacemaker is functioning properly. And in the next ECG, I'll give you an example of um, a pacemaker that's not functioning properly. <clears throat> now, if we just move on to uh, the next slide here, here's um, an image of a... Um, a pacemaker and it's typically implanted just under the skin and this is a single chamber pacemaker but if we had um, a dual chamber what you'd have is a separate wire that comes out here and it senses electrical activity in the atria and it also generates impulses if it's not sensing um, atrial depolarization so <clears throat> the inside of the heart is full of nooks and crannies and you can see it's a bit of a kind of a barb here that goes into the ventricle and um, some tissue begins to grow around it. And so these wires become fairly well embedded in the atria and the ventricle, and they sense electrical activity, and if they don't sense it, then they fire a pacer spike, as we see here. And if they don't sense electrical activity in the ventricles here, then they fire a pacer spike, and then we get a, a YQRS complex <clears throat> in this case. Now, sometimes what happens is, you know, uh, the battery in the pacemaker may get low after, you know, 10, 15 years or so, or these lead wires may become a little disconnected uh, and, you know, no longer have contact with the, uh, the inner wall of the myocardium. And so sometimes we get loss of capture where we see uh, pacer spikes uh, with no QRS, and then we'll see a pacer spike followed by a YQRS and then maybe a pacer spike without a YQRS, and a pacer spike without a YQRS, and a pacer spike with a YQRS again. <clears throat> and this would be serious, obviously, because the heart rate would be the distance from this QRS to the next one, which could be quite bradycardic. So we're doing a basic assessment of pacemaker function when we're looking at paced rhythms. And we also want to find out if the patient is on anticoagulants when they're uh, being paced. That's uh, significant, especially if it's a trauma patient who's on anticoagulants. So we want to try to gather as much information in a short period of time as possible.